In this video, I'm going to uh, explain the method to create the high quality meshing and that is also very quickly. So uh, this is the heat exchanger, simple heat exchanger. Uh, there's a one tube and uh, one shell here. And uh, I, have, I have made the geometry in such a way and uh, if, you, uh, if you ever like uh, go through the, some real geometry of heat exchanger, it doesn't contain the parts in this way, so you have to like uh, use ex uh, the extract volume command and that command you can get over here, okay? So volume extract command and then you can extract the volume for the shell and also for uh, the tube and its thickness that is a solid body will be separate body and that will be only used for heat conduction across the uh, these two domains, okay? So without any uh, further delay, let's go for the meshing and I will use the uh, fluent meshing software. So go to workbench and uh, from here click on the fluent 2023 release 2 and uh, we will choose the water trite geometry workflow. Simply click on, this, uh, on, on that one and this will open the fluent. So this is right now the fluent is in the meshing mode. So you can click on the start. And if you want, you can also uh, enroll to the my course on the CFD analysis of heat exchanger. Also, I have the uh, four weeks course that I will be posting the links in the description. So you can go through those courses. They are very useful for the uh, learning the CFD. Okay, so, okay, you can, you can uh, take a look on the interior of the geometry. And you can also fill up the view. Okay, uh, first thing is that uh, we can add the local sizing. Local sizing is like, for example, you can add the local sizing on the any, on the, any one of the faces, but that I will decide later on. So first I will be putting the like, uh, this menu size is this one. You can see with the boxes and the maximum size you will see with the bigger boxes. So I think that the maximum size should be reduced to the four. And uh, I should be having the elements in a gap at least two. So the small gap, which is here, uh, one thing is that size should be enough so that we can put the two elements in the gap. So this size is, I think, okay. If not, then you can reduce to the maybe 0.2. Okay. And make sure that at least there should be two elements across the smallest gap. So that is smallest gap. It is a, the solid body, which is the thickness of the tube. And now simply click on generate surface mesh. So you can see that we have the two elements across the, this gap. Okay, element size on uh, these surfaces are like a uh, very uh, large as compared to the geometry. So I. I think we can add local sizing here. So I will be uh, like uh, click on the yes. So let's try the face size and that size I will be inserting on the all of the three uh, inlets. So uh, two inlets and two outlets. So inlet shell and outlet of the shell. I think that the sizing on the uh, the tube side is okay. So I will not be selecting them. So we have just selected the inlet and outlet of the shell. And right now the size we are getting is this one. I think, I think this size is very large so we can uh, work with the like a one. Okay. So one may be very, very nice. So, uh, but we have to check. So right now you can see the minimum, this minimum size uh, please keep this thing in mind. This minimum size does not mean that this size will be applied on this face. This face is a flat one. A curvature is on the sides, not on the, that face. 
so uh, on this edge the curvature function will take uh, will will be applied but not inside the surface which is flat one so here the the it will try to implement the maximum size but definitely uh, whatever size is applied it depends on the curvature of the geometry so the size will grow with a ratio of the 1.2 so uh, maybe we not be able to get the maximum size that is like uh, ultimate size in the domain but it will be like uh, some bigger size which have, which we already seen so if you use a, a, a local sizing local sizing means that uh, we are actually adding the size of the our own requirement so you can add the local sizing here so that is the inlet shell and out and the outer shell so that size i am right now planning is to put the one so you can click on add local sizing and now try to generate the surface mesh and see what size you get on this face so i think now this is uh, better than the previous one uh, the size on these surfaces they seems uh, large although we have applied the 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 uh, size function uh, based on curvature but uh, this curvature may be not that much uh, high in the in the value so so let's try the maybe some local sizing but right now this is not a concern right now so i will go with this meshing okay uh, the sizing on the tube is is also okay so let's go for the second step okay so now you have to describe geometry so geometry consists of the only uh, solid zones no we have the like a fluid zone for shell and uh, tube and uh, one zone is the solid which is here so the tube inside is the uh, is the shell is a is a fluid and shell also is a fluid and this tube thickness is the solid okay and which you can see from here so shell will contain the fluid and so is the tube and the tube thickness will be solid body okay so we have the like uh, geometric concept of both fluid and solid regions and may be or may not be wide wide means that the, they will not be taking part in the any calculation okay uh, do you want to keep opening an extra fluid region no we already have the fluid region so we don't want to apply that step uh, change all fluid fluid boundaries type from wall to internal we, we don't want and uh, and also we don't have the any Uh, of these boundaries with us so no uh, no shear topology because we want to keep the different boundaries and we will create interfaces in the fluent uh, non conforming mesh between the objects definitely when you don't apply shear topology we will be having the uh, non conforming mesh between the different uh, domains uh, you, do you want to enable multi zone meshing yes i want to enable multi zone meshing because i want to apply the map meshing on this tube thickness because the uh, triangular elements uh they may not be like on the surface they are we have the required two elements here but in inside the volume they will uh, will they will tend to be like uh, uh they will tend to be putting the larger elements there so uh, that will be not good for the calculation for the heat conduction through the solid body so i want to put the like a hexa meshing in this section only so describe geometry okay so now you want to apply the these type of boundary conditions yes you if you click on the any boundary you will see the uh, corresponding boundary in the uh, yellow color so velocity inlet is for shell and also for the tube inlet so that you can see by just hovering on the that boundary so similarly the you can see on this side and uh, we have the like outlet for the shell you can see over here and the outlet for tube is here but if you directly select the boundary then this boundary will change into the green color okay so uh, right now i am just going to change the interface of shell and uh, interface of tube to the wall so that i can apply the inf the inflation layers automatically and then i will convert them to interface back uh, in the fluent okay so right now i am going to convert them into the uh i will just keep them wall but i will change these interfaces to the interfaces okay and i will change the 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 remaining interfaces later in the fluent and uh, why i'm doing this thing because i will be applying the, the automatically i i want to apply the inflation so inflation will be like there is a function to apply inflation only on the uh, wall so for that i will use that trick 
interface and you can update boundaries so i will i will show you what what is the meaning of this thing so uh, now how many fluid uh, regions we have so we have the two regions one is shell and one is the fluid inside tube so make it two and uh, create regions now this will actually recalculate the mesh and uh, like you have to update the regions so shell is a sh is a fluid and tube is also fluids and solid is the solid so update regions and uh, now this is a trick that uh, this will this will add the boundary layers like inflation layers and those are the prism elements uh, and uh, not the traditional prisms but they can be having the like a uh, like a polygons on the base surface so like traditionally the prisms are like uh, uh, triangular with a triangular base but uh, in the fluid meshing we can also create that's the aim of this uh, exercise that we want to create the uh, polyhedron uh, prisms so this is a combination of the different uh, type of the cells here okay so i want to add the five layers and only on the wall so you can see that uh, inside the interface on the uh, two thickness side will be from the inside on the both sides so i don't want to add the like a boundary layer here we don't require the boundary layer in the in the solid bodies we just need the very decent uh, hexa meshing and that's all so that's why uh, i did the trick that i just changed uh, my uh, boundaries to the walls on the interfaces which are on the shell side and inside of two sides so that i can create the uh, inflation layers automatically so you can add here and now you have to add the multi zone control so i want to create the hexa meshing in the shell thickness which is the tube thickness so i will choose a solid body and my source is the wall 1 and the wall 2 solid that is on the two sides second is over here so they will be like uh, they will create hexa meshing and they will extrude the mesh as a source and the target so this is extrude the mesh along the length of the this whole cylinder so you have to add like a multi zone controls that's all and then go to generate so first it will create the meshing for the tube thickness that is solid body and then it will create the mesh for the two fluid regions which are the shell and the tube so not necessary that the, this is only used for creating the uh, meshing for solid bodies this can be used for any body so but right now i'm using this multi zone method only to create mesh for the solid body so now click on the select the body and uh, click on the generate multi zone mesh and uh, whenever you want to see the mesh from inside you have to like click here this will done automatically uh, whenever it creates a volume meshing uh, the fluid meshing so this is only this this time this only made the mesh for this uh, body over here so you can see that uh, we have like uh, hexa element these are the pave hexas and there are the like a uh, uh, four layers four layers one and second is here third is here four and maybe here there are only three elements so there are the combination of the three to uh, four elements across the gap but i think that the we can also uh work with the two elements so you can reduce them uh by going back to the surface mesh and here you can reduce the size like to the back to the their original size like a point uh, 3 like that okay so this is the mesh of this solid body okay now we can create the rest of the mesh which is for the like uh, the remaining two domains shell and the tube thick, uh, and the tube uh, volume so i'm going to use a polyhex core and uh, buffer layer peel layer so let's make the peel layers to the 2 and buffer layers to the 2 and the minimum cell length is a 0.2 and maximum cell length is a 3.2 okay and now click on the generate volume mesh and write down the minimum orthogonal quality is a 0.1 for this uh, solid body and uh, minimum target we are looking for is like a 0.15 if we can but then Uh, we can go uh, up to like 0.05, and the 0.01 is a bare minimum. You cannot go below the 0.01. So I hope that we are going to get the quality 0.15 or greater.
you can uncheck draw cell center uh, uh, cell layer and then again check then it will display the layers also on the solid body so this is what is happening with uh, like uh, if you put the inflation layers this is how the inflation layers will work and uh, inside the tube uh, uh, fluid volume and also uh, in the shell side so on the walls everywhere we have the like the and also we need an interface zone because uh, this will uh, be used for the heat transfer also boundary will be developing here so we also need this heat transfer so for heat transfer we definitely we need the uh, high quality prism layers and these are not the traditional prism but they are the polyhedra prisms means they have the more than like a three sides okay the mesh size uh, in the two domains tube and shell is uh, combined is uh, one 175 uh, thousand uh, and uh, the minimum quality is 0.24 but if you jointly report the quality for uh, like the including the the tube thickness also so you can do it from here so click on update so our overall mesh number is uh, like a two like 80, 80, 87, 343. so again again let me tell you uh, total number of cells including shell domain tube domain and the tube thickness domain is equal to two lakh eighty seven thousand three hundred forty one and the minimum quality is like a 0.2417 because we know that the quality in this uh, uh, tube thickness is uh, 0 0.5 that was reported earlier you can check it over here so in the tube thickness the number of cells are uh, one lakh eleven thousand seven hundred eighty so like uh, 30% cells are created in this uh, tube thickness, okay? And quality here is the uh, 0 0.50, okay? Okay, so now you can, uh, like first you can save this file, like uh, saving here. And after you save the file, you can uh, like take it to the fluent. So you have to click on switch to solution. And you can check that the how the mesh will look like. And uh, if you hide the few walls here, like a wall one shell. and the wall to so now you can see the things also from inside okay i hope that this will help you in understanding the meshing in the fluid meshing and also uh, important aspect of this uh, workshop or tutorial is that how to use a new function that is multi zone function in the fluid meshing